This might be the first. Yeah, I've been able to escape this for 30 years, but you've sunk so low that now I have to do it. <laughs> you got Tom Ball hooked up? Yes, sir. Um, for the first time, I, I mean, this guy's represented me, me since 1996. No, maybe before that, maybe 94. Uh, I met him in 93. And he's been my manager and my agent ever since then. And out of all the shows I've done, in the hundreds, probably if you take since 1994 to now, that's, I mean, probably hundreds of thousands of hours, maybe. I don't know. What, I don't know if Let's mil- get the exact number one day, Lummy. Well, I mean, let me, how long? I mean, Do- Tom, you're good at math. How long is tw- 20? That's 30. Well, 2024 from tw- oh, 1994. <laughs> what is that? Is that 30 years? Yeah, a long time. Yeah, 30 years. <laughs> Tom's over this already. <laughs> 30 uh, yeah, to me it looks like he's having problems with his headphones and he's making sure that they're not they're not the crack headphones. Yeah, they're kind of uh Wonk. Mes- messed up here. I, uh, Lummy, can't you see I mean, that you got a guy here that's got, you know, he, he, he well, I was trying to get your IM. I, I know, but you know you got me you got to multitask around here, my friend, okay? <laughs> Look, Tom, he's already done 15 things here this morning. I know, I know he is and you've done nothing. But anyway, um uh, just, but, but but bitch the entire time. So uh, he's good. Is he is he good now? And then do you tell, show him where the volume uh, knob is. Yes. And should you sh- you know what? We, we're so we're so rookie. We think that we're all that, but we're we're so rookie. Let me like nobody really helped Tom out. We just expected that he knew, and then we didn't like you know hook up his headphones. We didn't show him where the cough mic was or nothing. So you'd probably show him where the cough mic is, which is right by your headphone volume indicate your know, deal. Here. There you go. So, Tom, if you have to, like, clear your throat or – which I do a million times during the show. Just a habit of mine. So, let me you, – you got him, You got Tom all situated now? Yes. Is he getting situated? Yeah. I thought he was a, a radio veteran, you know. No. With that. He's a radio veteran – This nego- man. Con- he's a radio veteran contract negotiation, put out fires, fight FCC notices, get served legal papers. Like, that's – you know, that's what – that's what – Tom couldn't, you know, plug in from, you know, like as far as being on the air, let me, what's, what's 30 years, we do 20 hours of, well, oh, let's wow. say 20, uh, 20 hours a week. What would 20 hours a week for 30 years be? That would have to be something Bean would have had, he's Johnny calculation, man. But would that be hundreds of thousands? I don't think it would be in the millions. Would it be in the millions? No. 20, <laughs> 20. <laughs> So that would be um, four. That'd be 80, 80 hours a month. And then how many months are in 30 years? That's I, it's 124,800. Okay, there you go. So out of hundreds of thousands of hours that I've been you know, on the air, Tom has only done like little. Usually the only time he's been on the air is when some real bad stuff's happened and he has to stick his head in the studio and pull me out. Like during mid show, and that's only happened like maybe once or twice because like some really bad, you know, like he didn't ever pull me out of the studio to say, "Hey, you just won, you know, R and R's Radio Personality of the Year." Or you're doing a great job, or you're man. doing I'm a proud great job, you. <laughs> or you know, I just got like you know, the, you know, I just got serious XMs on the phone, and they're really thinking that you're doing a great job. None of that. It was always like, "Hey, you uh, did you say A, B, C, and D? Uh huh." Okay, well, we have, you need to come to my meeting. My you need to come to my office after the show because there's. And then I had a horrible show from that point forward because I was so scared. So in all in all these years, Tom, outside of the roast, which Lummy we just had in December, yes, uh, Tom, he would even admit very little mic time. Like as far as you just sitting down and being a co-host. This might be the first. Yeah, I've been able to escape this for thirty years, but you've <laughs> sunk so low that now I have to do it. <laughs> Did he write? Did did, did 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 the son of a bitch write material? Yeah. I mean, did he did he did he prepare to kill me? Well, you guys are very cozy up there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, did, I, did I've he, never seen Bubba with anybody cozy. Yeah. Oh, you so talking about? It's kind of cute. Oh, you're talking about Seth? Yeah. You like yeah, our you little? Got, you guys are very cozy. Little little. We do have a certain little dynamic. We got a little we? thing, yeah. And you and you knowing me for God for every studio I've ever worked in and and broadcasted from in Tampa, you. You know genuinely I don't like a person beside me. Like, yeah, it's kind of like Harry and Lloyd up there. They thought every day was a no-brainer. 
Who? Harry Lloyd from uh, Dumb, and Dumb and Dumber. Oh, I'm sorry. That's how stupid I am. I didn't even get the Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> Boy, how dumb are you when you don't get the Dumb and Dumber reference? That, make, that makes you Lloyd Christmas for do, sure. Do you know how many times, Seth, that I've been sitting across the desk, a real fancy desk. Tom always has a real fancy. In fact, Tom, all through your our, our entire uh, you know, t- togetherness, I think that you might have. Have you used the same desk at all your offices? Is that like your special desk? Because I think that that desk was the desk that you had at at across the street, uh, across the street from your current place. I think it was the desk that you had upstairs from there. I think it was the. I think that's your desk. Like I think that's like some kind of heirloom or or some special desk. Like you don't change desks. No, it's a different desk. You know, I mean, Gina's got my old desk, and then the and desk your, that and your I had old up, office. Yeah, and the desk that I had upstairs here is at my house. Well, they're all fancy desks, uh, Seth. And I'm, you know how many times I've sat across a fancy desk from Tom, and he flat out looked at me in my eyes and said, "How could you be so fucking stupid?" <laughs> Yeah, I could actually imagine that a lot happening I mean, over like, the years. Like, I'm not mad at you, but you are in a world of problems right now, and you just, I, you, I cannot believe, like, somebody that is an adult and is not on the spectrum could make the decisions that you make. Well, I mean, if you didn't have somebody you, that taught you like that in your career, who you'd be, I mean, you'd be in jail. Well, you know what? You're probably right. <clears throat> You're probably right. Thomas kept me out of jail. So anyway, Tom, welcome. Well, it's, it's a long but distinguished list of people that have kept you out of jail. <laughs> Well, that's true. I don't, I don't want to take all the credit. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. You're right. You just happen to be kind of the ringleader of it all. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. You're the, I, mo- you're the mob boss of who we hire. Right. Yeah. Tom, <laughs> I, I, I've been involved in all of them, Tom, not some of them. In fact, the latest one that I had, you pretty much did all the work. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. What are you going to say, Seth? I was going to say, Tom, at any point over the last, I don't know, however many, 30 years. Hold on. Can I stop you? Can I stop you? Yeah. The answer is yes. Because I know what you're going to say. At any time over the past 30 years, how many times did you want to fire Bubba? I was going to ask how many times he's thought about jumping off this ride. Like, seriously. Oh, pro- I would say probably at least six. That's yeah, it. well, you know, I was always hopeful when Bubba would fire me that he'd actually mean it. Yeah. <laughs> but he I, never did. Yeah. How many I, times did you fire him? Twice, and I cried both times for him to come back. <laughs> 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 I fired him twice. I was like, and "Sweet, I'm out of here." One of them, one of them, one of them, which he he was on a cruise, and I just happened to be able to fire him while he still had self service. But then, you why know, why were you firing him that day, Bubba? Because uh, the uh, King Air wouldn't start. That was supposed to take us to Miami, and he hired the pilot. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was that was my fault. Right. While I was in the Caribbean Jeez. on a cruise ship. Just, just and I the think plane I, wouldn't start. Yeah, that like, Tom like like Tom pulled the spark plug wire. You know what I'm saying? So we're on. I'm not even going to tell the story, Seth. But you were I fi- that wound tight back uh, then, Bubba? So hold on. I fired him, and then we, we, fl- we the guy finally gets it started. We get there. We get to the gig. We're not late. Everything's cool. I just completely overreacted. Was a complete dick. It was Wormy, too, wasn't it? Yes, it was Jim Wormy, <laughs> our friend. And I'm yelling at him saying, Jesus, Jim, I've got you know, 200 hours sitting beside you, and you tell me how good of a, pl- a pilot you are, and you can't even start the pi- plane. Right. i got a strip club to get to. i, I got to get up. Got to be on time. I know I got a thousand bucks to make. <laughs> so, so by the time I landed, Seth, Tom was out of cell service. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that was kind of back in the day when you couldn't buy Wi-Fi on a, on a ship and things like that. Thank so, God. So yeah. So so by the time I landed and we made it to the gig, okay, and everything was okay, like nothing, nothing. Everything we made it. It was okay. Like you know, you know. Now I start feeling bad. I'm like, oh my God, the things that I said to him. And I hung up on him. I told him he's fired. I hung up on him. I said, I'm just. Oh Did my. he seem affected when you said he was fired? No, Bubba? no. <laughs> he, he was like, what? he's like, you know, do you, do you, no, this is Tom doesn't get combative with me. He gets super calm, cool guy. Well, someone's got to be calm in the <laughs> so conversation. I go, yeah. I'm going to tell you something right now, Tom. This is ridiculous. Are you scared? You know, this is our first appearance in Miami. Like we have to do good here. I mean, you know, I got the whole promotional team ready to pick us up in a limo. And you, all you had to do was make sure that Jim knew how to get us there. So we got the bigger plan and everything and you know i cannot believe time you didn't hire a pilot that knew how to start to playing tom are you serious you know we're gonna probably end up losing this affiliate god damn it tom you're so stupid i can't believe you did it you know what tom i'm done with you so, th- so then i hung out so he, he he would say 
well, I'm sorry you feel that way, bud. <laughs> and uh, you know what? That means F you. So hold on. And, and so I, I would just like, that would be my whole spiel. And I was waiting for Tom to come back and say, let me tell you something, you fat son of a bitch. I'm not the one that pulled the spark plug wire on the plane. I'm, I'm, I booked it. I got everything done. I can't help you right now. You are completely out of line. Nope. That's not what you got from Tom. You know what you got from Tom? I'm really sorry you feel that way, and it's been good working with you. <laughs> and then, he, then he'd hang up on me before I could hang up on him. Yeah. So then, you know, I mean, because I get back 90% of my time for about 4% of the money that I make. Yeah, so anyway, I'm glad you got it all figured out. Don't, hopefully you don't show that formula to the employees. Uh, so, so, so then, Steph, I land. Everything goes great. We're not, we're not late. It's great. And I start feeling horrible. Like, oh, my God, you know, and then I went to Brent and Brent because Brent was right beside me when I called. I said, was I really pretty bad at Tom? Well, you know, and, and Brent tells me everything. And Brent just usually blows smoke up my ass. But then Brent would say, yeah, you know, you really said some stupid stuff. And, and he had nothing to do with it. And, you know, it, it wasn't his fault at all. I mean, the guy ended up getting it started, but it didn't have anything to do with Tom. And you were just unloaded on him. Like, you know, really, it was. So then I tried to start calling him. And he'd be he'd be at sea at four days, and I'd leave messages. And finally, I'd leave like my last couple of messages would be like I'd be I'm, I'd be in tears. Be like Tom, <laughs> I am so sorry. I mean seriously, brother, we've been through so much. I you know you're my buddy. You know not only you're my agent, but you're my friend. And I just I'm so sorry. You know. And then Tom would just be like, whatever, dude. I knew you were just flipping out, being a dick. I'm, I'm we're cool. <laughs> That's what he would say. To me, well, I mean, right, Tom? I mean, after like you never would even yell back at me when you let when you started being my agent, like when you unfired yourself. See, Tom never, uh, Tom never got unfired by me. He unfired himself, meaning whether he was going to continue to rep me or not. Who's really in charge here? Is this a mutual relationship, or does somebody have the uh, the upper edge? Oh, I think uh, me and Tom's relationship is fifty fifty. No, no, uh, uh-uh. I'd say fifty fifty on some things. Never sixty forty on some things and forty sixty on some things. It's a lot of numbers. Yeah, like <laughs> like 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 the radio show. Tom never steps in like and tells me how to do the show or topics to stay away from. He never does that. He only steps in when we might be you know treading on some waters that could potentially hurt business. That's the only time, but you know, and then we don't, and then, and then with regards to the racetrack, you know, like Tom, I, I, Tom doesn't mess with me on my duties and I don't mess with Tom. We, we each know our responsibilities. Like Tom doesn't come out there and stop me on the grader and say, Hey, well, you know what? Now I think of it. He does every once in a while, stops me on the grader and says, Hey, big boy, might want to start pitching that blade down a little bit. looks like you're getting a little bit of a crown on there. I'd be like, shut up, Tom. Go back and count the hot dogs, buddy. Because <laughs> <laughs> Tom handles all the money. I'm, I'm I'm just in charge of the surface. That's really all I'm in charge of. Tom, did did Bubba have to talk you into getting the the raceway, or did were you into it? Like, how did that all, all go oh, down? Oh Jesus, dude! I, you know what? I had to step in and answer for Tom. I don't think it's a topic we really probably want to get into. Oh jeez, okay. Juncture. I've already broached one of those. Okay. I mean, Tom, Tom, would you not agree that let's not get into that at this point? We're getting along so well. Yeah. Why <laughs> why, why get into it? It wouldn't be good for you. Yeah. What? Yeah. It's bad for me. Is know? it bad? Well, yeah. I mean, what you do? Did you hold them hostage to give you the money? No, it's just things. A lot of things have changed, and and we're burnt out on it. And it takes a lot. It, I think it takes way more. Um, w- w- I, I think we both underestimated the manpower it took. It the takes. best part about it is Gina really loves it. Oh yeah, the best part about it, Seth. I swear to God, if Gina ever comes back in and babyface, and if you ever mention the racetrack in any way, shape, or form, I will hit you. Oh, she's it's, she hates it. Oh, more than anything in life. You got it. What in 2013? No, 2012. What? 2012. Oh. No, no, 2011. You guys are both short. <laughs> <laughs> Tom knows every single hour that he's she, on that thing, and she like. She, hey, 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 the big question is, how many years have we made money? Oh, that's right. None. None. Zero. Bubby got you. It's not a business. That bitch is a hobby. That's not even a hobby. I mean, you, Tom. And I don't like racing, so how do I get a new hobby? Tom, if if you were going to throw this much money into a hobby, it would have been something that you liked, right? 
Yeah. When you got about, I mean, you know how they say. According to the boards here, I guess it would be uh, Pokemon Go. <laughs> well, like everybody's asking Pokemon Go questions. It's well, like, now, Tom, I will have to tell you. And, and by can, the way, everybody, Pikachu isn't that cool. And it's, <laughs> <laughs> well, since we aren't up on our Pokemon like you are, can you tell us, like, right now, like, what are the cool ones? Oh, there's plenty of cool ones. You know, I like the ones that kind of look like you, like <laughs> pincers, you know. What? <laughs> what are the rarest ones? Like what? Like what's the like? If you were at your office today and you'd happen to happen to get a real rare one and you'd put you in a really good mood, like what would be a rare one? Eh, you don't really, you know, catch rare ones in the wild. You know, you got to go to the special events. You got, you know, well, you go to the special they're, events. You've been to two of them in the yeah, last six they're, months. They're professionals at uh, pulling money out of your your pocket. Oh yeah, I mean Tom. It's a racket, Tom. How, how, I mean, do you feel comfortable about discussing how much maybe if you combined you and your wife's Pokemon totals? Like, is that something you would want to discuss? Oh, it's really not that crazy, you know. I mean, fifty you know, grand? Oh no, no, no way. I mean, if you, I guess if you're going to count, you know, travel and air. No, 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 not, not and, counting now. But I'm just counting like you know the game within the game. Oh no, you know maybe you know, I mean we don't spend. You know, even a hundred dollars a month, probably. Oh, okay. So I thought you guys were maybe up, you know, up there. What are the conventions like? Is it is it? Where are you, you the oldest people there? No. Uh, is there some real old ones? Oh yeah, it's a lot, a lot of, a lot of older people. It's more adults now than kids. I mean, but the, you know, the events are crazy. Like, uh, you well, know, they're also in cool places. Like the last one, I think, was on the L.A. Pier, wasn't it? Yeah. The yeah at the at at the pier. Yep. Now, did, now, did you get a chance to venture out into the bowels of L.A. to see how bad it was? I mean, you're the last person I know that has traveled. You're the most recent person that I know that's traveled to L.A. And did you guys go outside the convention at all and see how bad it is, or is it is it that bad? Is it you know what they say it is? No, we stuck you know in between you know in that whole Santa Monica area there. I mean, there's no real reason to go out of there. So, you know the the. You, you you walk around so from you know the pier back to Venice Beach. I mean it's probably like five miles, and we probably walk back and forth around there and downtown. Hold on, Santa you guys, Monica. you guys, you walk five miles. And you don't take an Uber. Oh no, we probably when we. That's one of the things that's good about those events. We, you know, it's uh, all in kilometers. So you know it. it you know we probably. You know, on a, a week that we go to one of those things, we probably go a, over a hundred kilometers. So, you know, what is that? Like eighty miles? Walking? Yeah, over a week. I wonder Gina's so skinny. You'd see her. She, she lost all kinds of weight. It's often. It's all. You know what, Seth? Note to self: If you want to lose weight, look go for to the, pokies. Go, go to the pokey conventions because you got to walk eighty miles. Well, you probably don't realize you're you're walking all that if you're if you are looking for Pokemon to capture. That's you know? true. Right. It's like watching TV on the treadmill. Time flies. Yeah, it does. Uh, so anyway, speaking of which, uh, welcome, Tom, and to to being a complete, you know, mics open the entire time co-host. Just double dutch your, I mean, like. Anything you want to get off your chest? There's no, I, I just want to let you know there's no <laughs> rules. You know, like there's like there's no, no, no topics to stay away from. Like, you know, we just let it See, rip. That's how you get in trouble all the time. There there are rules. There well, we do have rules, but not rules. We wouldn't be able to go through all the rules with you on the air. Well, like I, there's under, like, you know, like one of the rules, everybody don't say, like, don't say the F word. It, I don't you, have to go through the obvious you, rules with you. But what you, I'm saying you is really you just think, let it rip. You really think I don't know those rules? No, I, I know you know. I, it's, I, it's been my job to remind you of those rules. I understand that. But you've never been in the show and felt the dynamic that, you know, there's, there's a little bit of a chemistry in here, you know? Like, you never you never experienced this. <laughs> right. It's so amazing. I'll probably lose control and I won't be able to help myself. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the chemistry and excitement is just so overwhelming that you might not be able to you might not even right. go, you might not even right. be able to go you know manage your own 100 Domino's franchises today right 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 I, I th are these Dan's headphones <clears throat> no they are not no, Dan no. has the uh, gold ones right there now, Tom you seem to be having headphone issues are they, are they do, do you not like those headphones no I I just didn't spell Grecian formula so I didn't think they could be Dan's. <laughs> 
think Tom Tom's turned this appearance into a roast. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, he's got material on everybody. <laughs> keep it coming. Keep, 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 keep it coming. That's great. Keep it coming. So anyway, welcome, Tom. For those that aren't familiar with the show, Tom is Tom Bean. And he is my partner in some stuff, and he, more importantly, is my one of my be- very best friends, and at my lowest po- and and my agent and my manager, and at my lowest point in life, there were many. I mean, he is such a phenomenal friend. Doesn't keep score. I mean, because I don't think I'll ever be able to repay you, Tom. Like, I don't think I'll, unless I hit the lottery, I don't think I could ever come to you and say, hey, Tom, let's go ahead and settle up on the books on what I owe you. I don't think I'll ever be able to do that, to be honest with you. And you're cool with it, I think. Yeah. You, I, I, you know, I mean, you, I, I don't think I'm too worried about it. No. But there'd be times, let me, honest to God, in the very lean years when Manson was making, well, first of all, I will tell you this, I don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole, but for during, during, well, God, I think even before Bubba 98.7, I think right after right after Cox, Tom took me aside and said, listen, we're going to get this new radio station, and that guy carries a big number, and he's not worth it. And he, all he does is write songs that people don't like. And, <laughs> and, and, and hold on. And all he does is just continually to call you a stupid fat ass and how your kid hates you. I mean, it's quite, I mean he's, 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 he's quite the visionary. Wow. And your kid hates you and you're going to lose everything and all this. And you've lost everything and you've mismanaged everything and you're fat. Or he's going to write really, really like, you know, Casey's in trunk, my trunk song, which was actually causing uh, Cox to lose. Say, people were, you know, Clients were pulling because of, the, of 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 that parody, and so Tom came to me like and said, "Listen, you got to get rid of him." I'm like, "No way can I get rid of him!" But he's the one that called get rid of Manson three years before I got rid of Manson. What's the name of the show? The Bubba the Left Sponge. Oh, show. I thought I thought I was just checking. That's that's what he was saying to me, Seth. <laughs> that's what that's the conversation we have. I'm so glad I don't carry a big number. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, there but there would be times, Lummy, where I didn't, the business didn't make one on our first you know early days on Twitch, when we only had Twitch and a and a smattering of terrestrial stations that don't really pay us that much. You know, we were really it was really really lean, and I'd have to go to Tom on Wednesday. And like borrow like sixty two hundred dollars to, to to cover payroll, like you know it was this guy as people don't even know uh, his importance and how good of a friend he was to me. I mean, I would have been probably either managing a Domino's pizza or working for Tara uh, if uh, if I didn't make it in radio, and I wouldn't have been able to make it in radio had Tom not you know kept me afloat. For Tom, if I was ever at my lowest, would you let me be a manager at one of your Domino's? Or would I have to work myself? Could I just roll in and be the manager? Or would I have to like start as a driver? <laughs> I, I I think uh, you would do better just as a driver. Well, hold on. What do you mean? What do not you mean? even a manager. You're not Ooh. even gonna let me manage. You're not even gonna let me manage. You think my skill set's so low that I can't even manage a Domino's? I think that you know that I'm deep down. I'm kind of smart. Yeah, but you don't pay attention. Yes, it's too much going on. So you wouldn't let him be the cook. Hold on, if Domino's was my life, if this store and how well this store was my life, and that's how I got paid on it, bitch, I would, I would have that thing dialed in. All right, all right, I, I well. mean, the delivery truck would have new brakes too. I'd like, I'd be, I'd be on it. Do you, let me <laughs> let me ask you another question, and I want you to be dead honest. In all the meetings we have. And sometimes, you know, it's most of them have been radio meetings and clients and things like that. And I always end up, you know, speaking at at these things. Has there ever? I know there's been many a times that you've seen me speak, and you're probably like, "Oh, Jesus!" I mean, just shut up. You're just you're sounding stupid. But has there been has there ever been a part that you've heard me talk? Like I hear you talk all the time, and I just like I just think, "Wow, poof." He'll use like you know. Listen, basically, uh, you know, we're gonna have good stock because the EB, the EBITDA, did the EBITA. Like, <laughs> you know, like he knows all that stuff. <laughs> you know, like all that financial. Like when him and Randy Michaels would talk about you know finances and stuff like that. There again, but Tom, have you ever heard me talk and say, "Wow, that was pretty. That was a pretty good one." You forgot the D in EBITDA, but that's okay. <laughs> right, EBITDA. I don't even know what it is, but Tom will record. Like, but but you- yeah, of course. You know, when it comes to broadcasting, you know, as I've always told you, I give you your props when it comes to broadcasting. You're one of the best broadcasters of all time. Your instincts about what to do and 
you know, how to make uh, taking a dump funny for a, a, an hour is a rare talent for sure. Yeah. He just won't let you manage one of his dominoes. No, I just, I just, <laughs> you just can't manage your dominoes. Which I got to think managing the dominoes. Okay, let me just off the top of my head, Tom, think about this is what you got to know to manage your dominoes. You first have to be good with, with people because these people, you know, you're not at the higher end of the food chain with, reg- you know, with regards to, you know. What do you think? Oh, it's so, all- so you're saying my people are stupid? No. What I'm, I'm saying gonna is. I'm going to defend my people. My I'm, people are smart. I'm saying I'm, you're talking about guys that are making pizzas for a living and guys that are delivering pizzas for a living so some of those people I, I, might, don't, I don't have beef uh, delivering pizza. No, I understand <laughs> but I'm just saying like just like you, you saw me I got a guy to want to take tomorrow off you probably have a little bit of that in the pizza business guys not showing up or taking off tomorrow or stuff like that so you got to be able to oh, deal bro with, it's 2024 <clears throat> you got to be able to deal with with personnel Getting people to work is a challenge and in itself that, that's what I'm saying so as a manager you just can't you know you're gonna have to jump in on the line and you're gonna have to go ahead and you know what that guy that didn't show up for work today bitch you got to get your hands dirty you got to make you're making pizzas tonight then okay well maybe all your pizza makers are there but your are the girl that answers the phone or one of your drivers didn't show up well guess what you're answering phones and driving tonight yeah we don't answer phones anymore it's all uh, is it all ai automated you know deal yep and so okay but okay but, but but then your driver didn't show up you're down a driver well it's a friday night i'm i'm running that store over by usf which is your busiest store and uh, and it's it's and it's not summertime, so the kids are in school. I mean, we're selling a lot of pizzas, bitch. I'm going to have to be a driver for tonight. So I see. I think I would be a good manager. I really do. I mean, you see how well I manage a record crew at BR- <laughs> BRP. <laughs> <laughs> you should talk to these. Thanks, thanks for making my point for yeah. me. These guys are the worst. Oh really? I mean, I love him. The only one competent out there is Billy, and and Billy's. And he's only got one eye, right? And he's only got one eye. And sometimes, listen, let's just be honest, Billy. I know you probably listen to the show. Sometimes you're a little bit of a head case to deal with. Sometimes you're mad at me. You're not mad at me. You're talking to me. Sometimes I go, Bubba to Billy, and he'll just ignore me. <laughs> not even talk. He can hear me. Everybody else is. I'm like, hey, where's Billy? He's, like, he's right here. Well, tell him I need to talk to him. I need to talk about that cleanup and in, in, in turn three. To one eye, Billy's like your macho man up yeah, there? Yeah, kind of. And Tom, I, I, I don't know. I don't think he plays that with you, though, does he, Tom? Billy does a lot of stuff for you, too, and I don't think he plays that. Uh, I think when you call for Billy, he immediately responds. He, igno- uh, he, igno- he You know, sometimes. He, he ignores you know, me. He, he can be, you know, he's a... Uh, he's a handful. He can be a handful. He yeah. can be a handful. Oh, hold on, we got a few phone calls. Tom, Tom Bean's really making the phone lines. That's right. right. Uh, anyway, uh, Tom Bean, a co-host today, uh, and uh, I'm honored because I just I'm just so excited. I feel like I feel like Seth. I can kind of show off a little bit, and Tom see how good I am. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, then he'll pick up the phone and make a few phone calls. We'll get a couple more affiliates tomorrow because uh, he truly <laughs> believes in the product now. Because <laughs> he doesn't listen to the show otherwise. <laughs> you, you mean you think there are people out there that'll pay for this show? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> or, or he'll get you know what? Let me that. Or he'll get whipping on that app faster even than uh, we ever thought. There you go. Uh, yeah. uh, hello. 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 You're, yes, sir. Yeah, just a quick question. I was kind of curious, Bubba. If you can't manage a PayPal account, how are you going to manage the Domino's? Well, first of all, bitch. First of all, first of all, my PayPal is fine. My Cash App is what I can't manage, and I don't know. I don't, you know what? I didn't even hand that problem over to Tom Bean because it's so frustrating, and it, like he he doesn't have the his valuable time of of all the stuff that he's got going on. He doesn't have time to track down this this Cash I, App situation. I, I think he was doing another dig at you. <laughs> yeah, I think that went right over your head. Oh, you're right. <laughs> my did. cash app or my PayPal is fine. That's how stupid I am. I am George Washington or from Dumb and Dumb or whatever the guy's name is. Look, <laughs> Christmas. George Washington. I mean, I am. Uh, you're right. That's Lloyd Christmas. Man. Tom Christmas. did. You know, Tom like, did uh, uh, up up until recently. Tom, we didn't. Tom thought I could handle my PayPal account, but now I will let you know that all PayPal expenses go through Tom's office now. <laughs> We kind of set up a new little thing. Uh, hopefully, I'll see, because be able- I actually like look at it. Oh, hello, oh. <laughs> hey, Baba. Y- yeah. Hey, I would love for Tom to tell the story of sitting down with you. And oh, by the way, this is this is Tuttle. Is this, this, is this Tuttle? No, no. It sounds like Tuttle. This does is he not? Uh, this is one of our parody guys, I believe. Oh, which one? Uh, I think it's Carlos. We only have one. 
Well, yeah. Dark match, Steve. Carlos, are you going to come out? Are you going to come back with anything? Did you quit? Because if you just quit and you're just going to be Carlos Mandinko, but you're not the parody guy, then I won't expect anything from you. And we can be friends, of course. We're buddies. <laughs> but, like, did you quit, bud? I'm not the parody guy. Oh, oh you have the same number. Pretty much the same number. Love me. Oh, love me. But he's love from me. South love Carolina. Me. Wait, love me. Way to, way to throw me a pick six, bitch. Sorry. Well, I he, mean, really. For real. But like, he, Yeah, sorry. He's, he, he has 843, so sorry. Jeez, not, a, not every 843 guy no, he is has, Carlos the Mandico. No, I know. He has also the same first three numbers. Oh, Jesus. Uh, sir, would you be open to writing a parody yes. song? <laughs> sir, here's the deal. Uh, what's, 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 what's your name, first of all, sir? You can probably do as good a job as I'm, some of the people that write them now. <laughs> Uh, my name is Marshall. Hi, Marshall. What can we do for you? What, what was your initial question? I'm sorry. I want to hear Tom tell the story of trying to talk you into going with Twitch, because I remember you talking about how crazy it was that Tom wanted you to join some video game platform and how pissed off you were about it. And I, I, I just think that his perspective on that would be cool to hear. All right, I, I, I don't, I don't know if I should tell the story or he should tell the story because you know, I'll probably. Well, I think story time with Bubba is always probably well, here's, funnier than with here, Tom. Here's Beatty. how it went, <laughs> Lummy. We've lost it all. It's 2017. We've lost it all. It's got everything gone. We're on. We're on. We're not even on AM820. We got hauled over there. Tom Bean and I went over to the, the Macho Man. Uh, were you there when that Neo guy owned it? He, this guy was a real. I mean, Tom. Out of all the absolutely not. Out of all the radio owners, you know, from the great Beasleys that you negotiated with, and you know, uh, Jay O'Connor was always real, you know, fair to you. And uh, even though we don't like Keith Lawless, you know, well, actually, Keith Lawless's stupidness and, and not reading detail allowed Tom Bean to sneak a clause by him. Is just, that's why. <laughs> see, listen to this, Seth. Tom Bean put in this this kicker, whereas you can fire us all you want, but we're not going to be held to a six month uh, non compete unless you pay us. Oh, good. And so, but t- so Keith Lawless fires us in September, thinking they're going to get a three or four month head start because we can't start till six months into uh, the next year when really we started January fifth. And uh, so anyway, Tom Bean, you know, has a good relationship um, with a lot of the radio, all all of the owners that we've ever cut big contracts with or been on their radio station, Tom has always had a pretty pretty good relationship. So Bruce Midori calls us and says, hey, listen, I sold my... Until you ruined him. <laughs> you, who? Yeah, until I... Oh, yeah, right. I mean, we had good relationships until I ruined him. Right. Be- right. I just want to be clear on that. Beasley's loved us. No, they won't take our call anymore. Um, you know, iHeart loved us. Uh, they, they won't take our call anymore. And uh, Cox, uh, same way. So... You're right, Tom. Thanks. Yeah, um, you're a professional bridge burner. What can I say? Yeah, I'm more than a bridge burner. I'm one of those like t- wartime. Like when they when they burned a bridge in war. Remember how they just bombed like with fifty bombs and you know, burning a bridge probably takes quite a while. Just the actual to let it burn. I blow bridges up. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm like a B-29 that comes over the bridge and drops 500 bombs. So anyway, Bruce Midori sells this radio station to this guy named Neil. And it's like uh, 10 a.m. 1040, uh, a.m. 820, and some other stations. And some tra- some FM translators. Well, Tom, at that point, still um, had the ability to... Look at the report. I'm just gonna, Tom. I think you're going to be very proud of me on how I uh, how I word this, not to get us uh, in trouble. Yeah, I think you should stop. I'm just saying. Yeah, you, you had the stop. ability to look at my report card, my report card, and you knew how well I was doing or not doing. That's, it. That's all I'm going to say. So uh, you're armed with certain data that you know is pretty pretty accurate. And we go in to talk to this Neil guy, and this Neil guy goes, "Man, you got your horrible." Uh, your show didn't didn't pull any uh, any 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 numbers, and you're uh, you're in last place. And you know I'm going to move you. D- did he fire us all together, Tom, or did he just take us from 8:20 and put us to 10:40? I think that's what he did. Because I'm taking you off AM 8:20, which is you know the bigger signal, and I'm putting you on like 10:40, which I think like you know might cover Pinellas Park. <laughs> it, you know might it might you know I think Northern and Pinellas, Pinellas Park have struggles so. I I then say, well, you're wrong, buddy, because and and then Tom Bean presents 
his data, and uh, and uh, the and the guy. And I, uh, I think the guy kicked us out of his office. I think we both. I think you may have told him to f off, or did I tell him to f off? No, I, I think uh, I said we just need to leave. Yeah, and then I called him a mother effer on the way out. So, I don't, what was that question? Yeah, burn, Let me, burning bridges. Yeah. Oh, it was about uh, Twitch. How he was oh, able yeah. to talk to you. So we, ha- so we have nothing. We have nothing. Like we, we have. Oh, has it been? Has it been time? Yeah. Well, I'll just, I'll just end the story then. Okay. So we have nothing. We have not. We have nothing. We think we. Have, I think we have ninety-eight rock in Charleston. That's it. And uh, Tom calls me up to his office, which was here upstairs, and he goes, "Hey, um, I'm gonna pay twenty-five thousand. However much it costs to put cameras and a control board." And you know, and things back then were far more expensive and far more harder to. It was harder to visually get on the air than it is now. You know, just the software was so primitive, and so you had made you had to buy more stuff. So Tom bought all the stuff we needed to be on Twitch, and he says, "Hey, listen, so it was it was cutting edge. It was at the time. Yeah, it was, but it was also more expensive than it is today, too. I mean, like today, you could virtually do it with a laptop. Yeah, you know, back then you had to have a switcher board, and if you wanted to have multiple cameras and things like that. Well, cutting edge is always more expensive. So I go to Tom. So Tom calls me up and said, "Hey, we're going to be on Twitch dot com. Well, I'm sorry, Twitch dot TV." forward slash the bub army i'm like and so he goes he, he he goes to twitch on his on his computer and i'm looking at it and i'm like tom this is a video game this is pimply faced kids no, playing video no, games no you said tom this is stupid, this is stupid. <laughs> i did i go tom this is never gonna work this is stupid this is the dumbest stuff i've ever seen yeah and i'm like tom and he goes he turned to me and he goes well, then what other options do you think of there, buddy? I'm just like, well, you're right. I mean, it's like, it looks like it's a switch. Was everyone behind it that worked no, here at the time? No, oh. not even me. No. <laughs> no, 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 no one. <laughs> if you liked that segment, then you'll definitely like the new redesigned BubbaArmyHQ.com. We'll be back to the Bubba the Love Sponge show after this.